Hello and welcome back to Intro to Cataclysm. In this episode, I really wasn't kidding, we're going to talk about what keys even do, what buttons even do. And to do that, I want to introduce you to our new best friend, the keyboard overlay. And we're going to start by looking inwards, because we want to get a sense for who our character even is. In my case, I've already taken a look at this. If you press Shift plus At, that's the At key, this may be in a different location on your keyboard. If you're using the US keyboard, it's going to be on two. On a UK keyboard like mine, it is on the apostrophe key. So shift plus apostrophe is at, and that will open up our character menu. So as I say, I've already looked through some of these traits. Uh, we have a strength of eight. We have dexterity of nine, intelligence of eight, and perception of eight. Those are a little bit hindered at the moment. We're also emaciated, which means we've started starving. Uh, but what really concerns me is illiterate down here. That means I'm not going to be able to show you everything I would like to. Uh, illiterate is a real hindrance for exploring the lore of the game and using things like computer terminals. So I'm actually going to generate a new character real quick, same way I did last time. I'm just going to use the play now, default scenario button, and I'll be right back with you with somebody other than Lynette Lowe, who cannot read, I'm afraid. So there we are, that's a bit more fit for our purposes. We are Anton McDermott, male. Our starting profession is Bhikkhu, which I'm not entirely sure what that is, but it, it seems to be something to do with Buddhism. We have a normal weight, we feel fine, we're 24 years of age. We don't have any negative traits on this occasion. Certainly we don't have illiterate, which means I can show you a lot more. We have a cold tolerance, we're a fast healer. We have heat tolerance, strict humanitarian, and tough feet as well. Over on the skills tab we can see that our bashing weapon skill is two so we'll be good with a stick should we want to grab one of those. We've got pretty good dodge. We are one skill with melee and we have three social skill and one vehicles as well. We won't concern ourselves with vehicles just yet but we want to talk about moving around the world. So let's bring up our keyboard overlay and I'll talk about how to move around. Your first instinct might be to go for WAS and D, the good old WASD keys. These are very, very useful keys in Cataclysm, but they don't help you move around. W will open the wield menu where you can say equip a weapon should you have one. A will bring up the action menu. On this occasion we can use our holy symbol to meditate or we can use our smartphone which will allow us to track our calories, use the camera, store a book, play music, play a game, or turn on the flashlight. S will smash, and then we'd be asked to pick a direction to smash. We haven't yet gone over the direction key, so don't worry about that. And D opens up the multi-drop menu, which lets us drop items. On this occasion, we have the Sutras of the Buddha, which we could choose to drop, or any of our clothes, or a smartphone. So, how do we actually move around? There are two main schemes that people recommend. You can also use the cursor keys, the arrow keys, but you won't get diagonals that way and they're a little bit more difficult to set up should you want to. The main ways people recommend are either using the numpad to move around or using the HJKL keys. Now my keyboard doesn't have a numpad, but it's very easy to figure out for yourself should you want to do that. It's just like looking at a compass. Eight will travel north, two will travel south, four to the west, six to the east and then your diagonals are exactly where you'd expect them to be as well. If you want to stand still, and sometimes you do want to skip a turn and just stand in place, wait for monsters to come to you, you can press five right in the middle. So it looks just like a compass and you use it like a compass to navigate the world. HJKL is a little bit less obvious because obviously that looks like kind of a mess. You use H to travel uh, to the left or west. You use L to travel to the east or to the right. We use J to travel down or to the south, and K to travel back up or to the north. So I'll go over those again. That's H to the west, L to the east, J to the south, and K to the north. It's very easy once you get used to it, and it's very quick as well. You also obviously have diagonals to consider. So yes, let's take a look at those as well. Let me get away from this guy. We'll go over. Yeah, we'll open. We'll go into this nice open space here. That's uh, that's a lot better for us. Okay. So to move diagonally, we have got the keys Y, U, B, and N. So you can see looking at the keyboard roughly where those are. The Y key is just 
up and to the left of the H key, so that's going to move us to the northwest. The U key moves us to the northeast. Let me just get back into position here. Y to the northwest, U to the northeast. Down again with J. And again with B and N, roughly the same sort of positioning, just below the H key. So B is going to move us to the southwest and N to the southeast. Use K to move back up. That's B to the southwest and N to the southeast. Use K to move back up. So those are your movement controls. H, J, K, L, Y, U, B, and N. You will get used to this very, very quickly. Like it's it's intimidating at first. It's not if you've used them before. They are based on a, another movement scheme called V keys, um, which is used in software and stuff like that. But don't concern yourselves too much with that. This is super quick and useful and you can do it on your keyboard and just spend some time getting used to it if it is brand new to you. But yeah, it is, it is, it is very intuitive once you get the grasp of it. So, we also, when we left off, and now you can see I'm back in the dark as well. When we left off, I left you in the dark and hadn't given you any controls yet. We're going to go over to the curtains and open them up, as I did last episode. To do that, you can just use the movement keys. The window here is above me, so I press K to move upwards, and that's going to open the curtains. I can also open the window this way, and I can step out through the window this way. I'm going to go back in, and we're going to close it. To close it, we just press C, and we can close the curtains with C as well. Another way to open the window and the curtains is to press O, which is, I don't often use this because it is a little bit slower just to find the O key when I can just use the directional keys instead. So let's actually, let's open those curtains again. We'll go over to this one and just go around the room and open up the curtains. It's a good first thing to do, especially if you're still getting used to the movement controls. I'm just gonna, we've seen something, what have we seen? Two cracks. okay. So this is a good opportunity for me to introduce you to the shift plus V key, which will, it's its typically our view items menu. On this occasion, this crack has seen me. Oh no, that's uh, thats not good. Uh, so by default, it's selected monsters here, but we can press tab to look at items instead. We see a rock outside. We see Cobb Monthly out there on this guy's body, I guess. He, he was carrying a bag of cocaine. He's wearing a bunch of pants and whatnot. And there's some flint over there. Hit esque to close that. Um, yeah, not great that we've uh, we've seen a crack there. I'm just going to close these curtains and not worry about it. We'll go over here. Uh, we won't open those ones since there's a crack outside. We'll open this one. We're probably going to have to run away from here pretty quickly. So what are the keys do I want to show you? Whatever, what do I want to tell you? Okay, uh, we can also use the X key to look around. And that's just going to let us look around freely, get a sense for the world around us. Uh, we won't often use that, but uh, it can be useful to to get a sense for what's around you. You can, of course, zoom as well. Shift plus Z zooms out, uh, Z zooms in. So if we want a nice wide look at the world like that, we can zoom all the way out to this sort of distance, zoom back in with Z as well. I also do want to cover going up and down stairs. If we go over to the stairs here and press Shift plus greater than, that's going to take us downstairs. Shift plus less than will take us back up. So that's greater than to go down, less than to come up the stairs. We can also climb things like drain pipes. It's uh, a little more dangerous than stairs, but uh, this building should have a drain pipe. I'm just a bit concerned to go out there with the crack out there. The directional keys are also going to let us interact with certain things. We've already covered how to open curtains using the directional keys and windows and doors. Of course, yes, doors also work the same way. Uh, but if we ever want to talk to somebody who's in our vicinity, we can just press the direction towards them, in this case Y, and that will open up a menu asking what we want to do with Selma Ninja Farah here. So we want to talk to you, which is like that, and then, you know, you can go through this menu. You can have a conversation with your starting NPC if you like. One thing that uh, the directional keys cannot interact with is computers. For this, we have to press E to examine instead. That's E to examine, and then we can look at the menu in here. A good thing to do is always to go to these computers in the evac shelters and go to contact us on their menu. Then you can make a note of the location it gives you on your map and that's going to unlock a bit more map here. It's going to give us this road which leads out to a refugee center. It could be a long way away. On this occasion it's, it's pretty close but that's a good place, a good target for the early game is to try and get there. So if we've got a car or something we could probably quite easily make that. Of course, I think I already covered how to open the map. That's M to open the map. And you can use the Z keys in here to zoom in or zoom out as well. So 
We've talked about using X to look around the world like this. I'm also going to teach you to use Shift plus X to peek around corners. So let's, uh, let's, we'll ignore that. You can use the apostrophe key to ignore enemies. You are in safe mode by default. I'm just going to sneak up to this corner here. And uh, yeah, once again, let's press apostrophe to ignore them. And we'll get to this corner and I'll hit Shift plus X. And once you've done this, you can press a direction to, to peek a certain way. And that's essentially like previewing your next move. Unfortunately, it does give your position away to enemies who are around the corner. In this case, can I zoom back out? Yeah, there are the cracks. They see me and are probably heading in this direction. Well, one of them does anyway. So peeking is like having a free turn to consider your next move, but it does give your position away to enemies, so be warned about that. We're going to quickly get back inside away from those cracks. This is becoming a problem. So your two other best friends in terms of keys are E, which I've already covered, lets you examine items. If we go over to this door, we can examine it by pressing E. On this occasion, we've been told that the closed wood door is locked. You could pry it open with the right tool. If we were to try and step in the direction of the door, it says the door is locked. So roughly the same message we got from E, but E gives us a bit more information there. It's also how we interacted with the computer. E is your examine key. That crack has come around the corner and is now going to break that window. So it would be a good idea to uh, also, I think, step back to the window here and examine the curtains. When we examine the curtains, we can tear those down. We can also, our friend's going to help us out a bit there. That's good. We can also press the G key. This is your second best friend. G will let you pick something up. On this occasion, we could pick up the long string, the nail, the two sheets or the stick. It doesn't fit in any pocket though. So instead of grabbing it, I'm going to choose to wield it instead by pressing W. We'll go across to the stick and select that. We'll drop the Sutras of the Buddha, unfortunately. And now we have a stick. That's a weapon that we can use. And we can use it to then smash. So we'll smash this door down by hitting S and then picking a direction to smash in. Our friend is uh, fighting that crack, but we're going to focus on breaking down this door where we can see a ladder. Once again, we know how to go up and down, so we just hit shift and less than to go up the ladder, and we're on the roof, so we're relatively safe up here. We might go down and check on our friend in just a second. But those are the basics of moving around in the game. Let's see. Your directional keys will also let you attack enemies. So let's get close to this crack and see what happens. The crack likes to attack and then move away. We're going to try and step to step close to it. It's uh, it's unfortunately on the move. We'll wait by pressing the full stop key. This is how we wait a turn. That crack should come back in. It's going to come back in. It's going to come through the window. And once it's close enough, we can press the direction that would be stepping into the crack in order to attack. <laughs> unfortunately, we miss and the crack misses us also fortunate. It might try to land another attack, but let's take another swing at it. It does. It tries to go away. So the crack's very fast and uh, quite aggressive. We probably don't want to be messing with it, so I think I'm going to take our friend here and we're going to hide up on the roof and uh, wait for all this to blow over. Another good use of the E to examine key is when you're on the edge of a roof like this, you can press E and that will say, hey, you want to you want to examine the terrain or furniture where, and if you just press in the direction of the empty air here, the gap, we can either jump over, though there's nothing to jump over to, so we'd be risking ourselves there quite considerably, we can peek down and just have a look around. Much like we could peek around the corner using capital X, we can peek down from a roof like this. Let's in fact do this at the other side so we can see where that crack is. So examine, and then pick a direction, and then peek down, You've gone outside. Are you still dealing with the crack? Where is the crack? If I zoom out, can I see it? The crack, we cannot see. That does uh, does give me some concern, because I also don't see its body. But if we want to, we can look for a drain pipe as well. There should be a drain pipe leading up here. There it is in the bottom corner. Unfortunately, this is going to put us in view of the crack. But if we examine and press in the direction of the drain pipe, we can choose to climb down. And it should be a bit easier with the drain pipe here for us to get back up. You may have problems climbing back up. Let's not worry about that. We might do. Sometimes you can slip on these drain pipes. I'm going to zoom out and see what's around us. I do still see the other crack. So where is that exactly? 
I see you're 52 south and you haven't seen me. That's very good. So, like I said, with the less than symbol, or shift plus less than, we can climb back up and pick a direction to climb. This is just asking where on the roof you want to be placed. Do you want to be placed here or here? So we're going to just go for the corner. I'm going to say climb north and we are back on the roof. If I listen carefully over here, can I hear a crack? I don't hear any fighting. I'm going to examine again and we're going to climb down. Jumping down may hurt. Let's actually use the ladder. Be sensible about this, shall we? It's so like I said, it is a lot safer to simply use the drain pipe or the stairs or the ladder in that case. You appear to have uh, you appear to have dealt with that, Crack. Very good. Okay. So the last key that I want to explain in this episode, before we go into it in more detail next time, is your inventory key. Now there are a lot of ways to open the inventory and to um, mess about with your inventory. I just want to focus on lowercase i, which brings up your main inventory screen where we can see what our character is holding. Much like the at symbol brings up their traits and everything, and that's a good way to get to know your character or their condition, the i key brings up a snapshot of your inventory and you can see what you've got to hand. The smartphone, the stick in this case, which we picked up from the curtains over there, We've got an antravasa. You can always hit E to examine in more detail. This is a traditional ankle length Buddhist skirt. The bottom protrudes and appears in the rough shape of a triangle. Escape to close that. We're also wearing briefs, a holy symbol, a pair of flip flops, not great for the apocalypse, I don't think, a sangati, and an utasanga, which contains our smartphone. What is an utasanga? That is a traditional Buddhist shirt covering most of the upper body, but not the arms. We'll escape that and close that. Next time we're going to talk a bit more about examining your inventory and managing it too. So I hope you join me for that. In the meantime, thank you so much for joining me for this one and ta -ra.